attack moves fast, and in your monitors are no exception. The RE800 Silver is an older, high-end IEM that has been stripped of its fancy packaging, but not of its incredible sound quality. So, can you really get a $600 IEM and experience audiophile grade performance without the audiophile price tag? Right now you can pick it up for $100. It's a huge price cut. It's a classic earbud style instead of a typical big IEM that fills in your entire ear. It means a few things. First of all, most people won't have any comfort-related issues regarding their size. They are super tiny, which makes them go easily and quickly into your ears. It also means that they are extremely compact, making them very mobile and on-the-go friendly. Also, they allow for storage in space-limited situations. Their low weight certainly helps with carrying them around. In the box we are getting lots of different ear tips to go with them, so it can be a comfortable IM for everybody, no matter their ear size, shape or personal preferences. For me, the stock double flange ones work the best, both for the comfort and sound quality. That's the point I would recommend everybody to start with. Please leave a like and let's get to how it looks and how well it's built. At first sight it can look kind of cheap, however it's enough to touch it to realize that it's absolutely not. At least the shell itself, it is made out of aluminum alloy, quite thin one, but still, it's metal, it gives a more premium feeling and increases its durability greatly over plastic or resin IEMs, and it looks nicer. The cable is permanently attached to the earpieces, which is debatable at best but earbud style products often go this route for one reason or another. For many, this wouldn't be a big problem if the stock cable was very good. In terms of the technical aspects and its materials, we have some information specified. The conductors are made out of crystalline copper wire, probably OCC or a similar process, with a coat of silver over them. It indicates that they paid attention to the materials themselves, but I have just one concern about it. The ergonomics are not top-notch. The cable likes to tingle up and is slightly microphonic. It's not something that you would particularly want it to do, as it introduces some sounds when moving it. It is terminated with a very good-looking, high-quality, metal 3.5mm connector. I like that one a lot. It inspires confidence, seems durable and makes very good contact fitting snugly in all my devices like amplifiers, phones and laptops. The topology driver uses Hyphman's advanced technology and the research to essentially make a driver unlike any other. It involves creating a topological, nanoscale layer of material that's being applied to the diaphragm. It's being distributed in distinct geometrical patterns to make tuning it easier and more accurate. Their engineers can vary the surface pattern, compound used and even the thickness of a given pattern. That allows for the manipulation of the sound wave creation like never before. They mentioned that no other driver tech allows for such control and precision, resulting in clarity, detail and nuance. Heifman also says that it can best the world's most complicated multi-driver setups but with none of the coherency and crossover issues. Since it's a single dynamic driver construction, there isn't a crossover, so it can't be causing any acoustic problems or take up more space inside than needed. Subscribe to my channel and let's get to the specs. The frequency response goes from astonishing 5 Hz all the way up to 20 kHz. It goes much deeper than you can hear. It tells one thing, the driver is super capable, doesn't break up at low frequencies, even below our hearing, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. The impedance is 60 ohms. It's a fairly high impedance for an IEM. Regardless, 60 ohms is not very high for an audio device generally. Some headphones have upwards of 600 ohms of resistance, and possibly even more. The sensitivity of this IM is easily countering that anyway, coming at 105 decibels. Inner monitors are generally very easy to drive for a few reasons. Most of them are multi-driver, increasing their sensitivity greatly. It works the same way with speakers. Even if they aren't, 
like the ARRI 800 Silver, they sit very close to your eardrums, so you're not losing a lot of sound pressure by the distance itself. Lastly, the impedances are generally fairly low, as the thin wire coils don't have to be so long to cover up the entire diaphragm, as it's much smaller. In this case, the dynamic driver's size is just 9.2mm. Its tonality may not be a perfect match for any real target. It's not afraid to break common rules and try new things to achieve the sound signature that would otherwise be impossible to get while adhering to any conventional curve. The bass shows clear signs of roll-off, but it's not rolling off super fast. You can still hear deep notes in the 30 to 40 Hz region, but the sub bass is not elevated. Regardless, it has interesting bass punch characteristics, unlike any other IEM or even full size headphones. It's not super punchy in common sense, but still fairly so. However, when it does punch, it does it in a very coherent way. It's not just a hit that comes from somewhere or a random place. You're always aware of the place where it's radiating from, making it easy to localize. The lower midrange is technically brought forward a little bit, however the rest of it seems recessed and thin sounding, typical to hyphen products. It means that you're not getting any bloat, weight or meat to the notes, and in return it sounds pretty fast. Regarding its top end, it's slightly peaky, but not in a purely random way. It seems like it's done on purpose, for some reason. The hi-hats and generally high-frequency short hits are much harder than expected. You usually get the dynamic, punchy nature on the low end of frequencies, but this IEM extends it to the very high-frequency regions. Regarding detail retrieval, it's alright, nothing special on this front. Some elevation in these registers can make for a seemingly more detailed presentation than it actually is, as it tends to push details more forward at you, making them easier to discover. The soundstage is super wide for an IEM. Usually IEMs are very in your head, closed in, with not much spacing between notes, and even less space for the sounds to be in. That's why I was surprised to find out that it sounds wider than some of my full-sized over-ear headphones. The imaging is at a very good level. It's almost razor sharp, precise, and doesn't feel that forced or fake. One more odd characteristic of this IEM that I noticed is that the treble region has some audible resonance. Its decay is prolonged greatly, and I suspect that it has to do with its shape. The only difference between this model and the more expensive RE2000 Pro Silver is the housing itself and its acoustic properties so it would make sense that the shell is generating some resonance here. However, it's not an unpleasant effect. If it was in the bass, it would sound boomy. But since it's in the top end, it provides interesting sparkly character and long top end decay. 